if you look at BC, it's such an amazingly beautiful place. Any place you go, it's beautiful. In the crisp, clear morning air of British Columbia's Kootenai region, stands of cedar trees provide an abundance of natural material ready-made for a pair of creative, artistic souls. Just north of Nelson, British Columbia, across a narrow portion of Kootenai Lake, near the small town of Harrop, Barbara Kingsley and her husband Terry work diligently harvesting the bark from a cedar tree that will eventually be used to create beautiful handmade baskets that aren't quite like any other. Hailing originally from the suburbs of Chicago, Barbara planted herself in British Columbia, starting out as a school teacher before learning basketry. The first basketry I ever did was pine needle and that came from a workshop that I took in Spokane uh, 30 years ago uh, when I was there for a couple of days. That then became a real passion. It's very labor intensive. It takes a long time to, to complete even just a small basket. So uh, I began to yearn for something that I could make you know, faster. We discovered cedar bark and the cedar bark was thrilling. Not only learning how to harvest it and we have a back 40 full of cedar and we use it a lot to build with. And so uh, that was very exciting to find that material that was local. And it's beautiful as well. It's an amazing material. This is the actual basket material. We have to get it during the time of the year when the sap is flowing. That's when it comes right up off the cambium layer. And then for storage, we roll it up. And the nice thing about cedar bark is you can rehydrate it. After harvesting the bark, strips are cut with tools that were designed by Terry to help save time and energy in the process of preparing the wood fiber for weaving. He's been great. He, he's, a, he's an inventor, I think, he's realized uh, about himself. For instance, when we first started to harvest the cedar bark, we sometimes get strips that are, you know, 25, 30 feet long, if you can get the whole strip of the, the length of the tree. And he designed two different cutters for me. One that cuts it into however wide we want the strips, and then the other one to thin it. Sometimes we can get two strips out of one if the bark is thick enough. So he just invented these little machines, the same as he did. We work with copper as well. And he took an old jigsaw and a hammer and whipped it up, and so we put the metal in there, and, and the jigsaw goes up and down. As a self-described earth person, Barbara's connection with organic art forms wasn't a fluke. Her foray into basketry was happenstance in the beginning, but it became clear there was something beneath her desire to create useful objects, while at the same time, respecting the earth. Well, I think we're, we're losing too much connection uh, with the earth. I mean, I think we're mistreating the earth, and because we've lost a connection, I, I think then we lose a connection with ourselves. If it's all interconnected, then, you know, it makes sense that the more we get into the electronic world and we get pulled out away from the earth, we just don't respect it anymore. I, I do have a, a small part of uh, native Indian in my heritage on my, my maternal grandfather's side and uh, that's always been a really important thing to me. I know it's probably a, just a tiny little bit but it's been very inspirational to me and they were basket makers. Now their basketry is totally different than what I do. Nonetheless they like like many Indian people I think basketry was very common different styles and but I didn't really even know that about the, this Abenaki people when I uh, started making baskets, that came to me later, and I thought that was an interesting coincidence. Um, there's something about baskets that's very sort of primal. They are ancient, and they're, they're vessels for whatever you want them to be. And uh, it's just, there's something really just very charming to me about them. That I, I look at pictures of, of old native women sitting and making their spruce root, you know, their old gnarled hands, and I, I just really connect with that somehow. I don't want to make something that's superfluous. You know, I, I want to make something that's useful, but beautiful as well. So to weave, I, I call it weaving function and beauty 
together. But also within that is um, the challenge of making sure that it, the craftsmanship is, you know, well done, that the structure is sound. And um, yeah, I think it's the artistry. I think that, that, that it holds a different creative thing for me individually. Running the gamut from square to melon-shaped baskets, interweaving color, especially in the pine needles, creating baskets within baskets, and searching for the perfect wooden handle around which to form a cedar basket. Barbara puts them all together to form artwork that is functional, beautiful, and green. Quite a nice combination when it is created by someone whose life is built around an existence that honors herself and her heritage. The response has been amazing. They do speak to people. The work does speak to people on a level that makes me feel really good. There's just nothing like that feeling that it gives you uh, to create something from yourself. Taking your head and your heart and your hands to, to do it, it's, it's important. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.